Okay, so welcome to this next video in the playlist on inflammation and angiogenesis. In this video, we're going to talk about uh, the role of the endothelium in uh, preventing fr thrombosis. So we're going to talk about the antithrombotic mechanisms that the endothelium has up its sleeve. Okay, so antithrombotic mechanisms of the endothelium. Okay, so the structure of this video then, we're going to start off with a revision of the hemostatic pathway, okay, and uh, then what we're going to talk about is thrombosis, which is basically when you uh, activate the hemostatic pathway when there isn't actually a, um, a hole in the side of your blood vessel, basically, okay. And then what we'll talk about is the mechanisms that the endothelium has for preventing thrombosis. And it's necessary in order to understand the mechanisms that the endothelium has to prevent thrombosis. It's necessary to uh, understand the process of hemostasis because that's the process that is happening in thrombosis. Okay, so let's go over uh, the process of hemostasis then. So hemostasis, and hemostasis is also spelt a different way, so the way I've always been taught to spell it is with the uh, British English spelling of heme, and I just can't resist putting the A in, uh, but the American spelling of this uh, would be uh, with the omitted A, like so, hemostasis. Okay. Now that looks hideous to me, just because I've been brought up with this one, uh, and this one somehow has some sort of satisfaction when I write this. Uh, but I can understand that if you have been brought up with this one, then this will look very, very odd. Okay, so, hemostasis. So what is the process of hemostasis then? Well, basically, it is the process by which you stop hemorrhage from occurring. So let's say we have our arteriole here. Okay, so let's say it's a little blood vessel known as an arteriole. So basically, the way it goes is that you start off with arteries, which are very, very big blood vessels that are carrying oxygenated blood. And those are the ones that you learn, you know, in anatomy. And then it breaks down into a load of smaller blood vessels known as arterioles. And these are small blood vessels, small compared to the arteries. You certainly don't learn all the arterioles in anatomy, there's just simply too many. Um, and uh, then finally it goes into capillaries. Now capillaries are tiny little blood vessels, they are one cell thick. So you don't certainly don't learn about capillaries in anatomy. And so basically we're going to imagine that we have cut ourselves, and we're now bleeding and what we've done is we've managed to cut through one of our arterioles, okay, or at least we'll cut through many arterioles, but the reason that we're bleeding mainly is because blood is coming out of our arterioles. Uh, also our venules as well, but we'll, we'll stick with an arteriole. Okay, so we've made a cut into the side of this arteriole here, so we've got this little incision, okay, and we'll now look at the process by which you stop blood from coming out of this hole. So once you've made this hole in the side of the blood vessel, what's going to happen is the blood that is within the center of the blood vessel is going to come out of the blood vessel into the surrounding tissue. And the fancy word for bleeding is hemorrhage. And again, I'll spell it with the British English spelling, but if you're uh, an American, or if you just use American English, replace this with uh, the spelling without the A. Okay, so hemorrhage. Um, so, hemostasis is the process by which you stop hemorrhage, basically. That's all this is. It basically means stopping hemorrhage. So, there are many different components of uh, hemostasis. So, let's discuss the hemostatic pathway. How do you actually stop blood from coming out of this uh, blood vessel when we've got a great big hole in the side of it? Okay, well, let's firstly discuss the different layers of the blood vessel, because this is actually going to be very, very important when it comes to understanding what triggers off the hemostatic pathway. Okay, so, the different layers of the blood vessel. So we'll look at a blood vessel from, uh, well, we'll look at a cross-section of a blood vessel, so as though we've chopped through the blood vessel uh, in the plane uh, perpendicular to the axis of the blood vessel. Okay, and we're now looking 
that be uh, blood vessel? Okay, so we'll have right in the center here the lumen of the blood vessel. And the lumen of the blood vessel will be lined by endothelial cells. So here on the lumen, we have endothelial cells. So these are all endothelial cells. And the endothelial cells are sitting on a membrane of collagen, known as the basement membrane. So I'll just give these endothelial cells nuclei first. Okay, so here are the nuclei of the endothelial cells. And then they'll all be sitting on a basement membrane of collagen. So let me draw this basement membrane of collagen now. I'll do it in this turquoise. Now, the basement membrane doesn't just consist of collagen. It has a bunch of other proteins as well. But one of the key components of the basement membrane is collagen. Okay, so they're sitting on this layer known as the basement membrane. So let's label some of these things up. So these are the endothelial cells here, okay, which line the lumen of the blood vessel. So these are endothelial cells. And they are sitting upon the basement membrane, which mainly consists of collagen. Okay, then underneath the basement membrane, what you have is another layer of connective tissue, which mainly, again, consists of collagen. And this is known as the subendothelial connective tissue. Okay, so let me get red to highlight this. So you have a layer underneath the basement membrane, which I'm going to colour in in red. And this represents another layer of connective tissue, known as the subendothelial connective tissue. It's also sometimes often referred to as the subendothelial space. Okay, so there in red is the subendothelial connective tissue. So I'll label this up as well. So this is subendothelial connective tissue. Okay, and again, it mainly consists of collagen. Now, more peripheral to the subendothelial uh, connective tissue, what you then have is another layer of connective tissue known as the internal elastic lamina. And the internal elastic lamina, unlike the basement membrane and subendothelial connective tissue, um, it consists of mainly the protein elastin. Okay, so in blue, this final layer surrounding, oops, don't want to make a horrible sludgy mess. Okay, so in blue here, surrounding the subendothelial connective tissue, this is the internal elastic lamina. Okay, so I'll label it up. Now, those four layers that we have seen now, uh, the um, endothelial cells, the um, basement membrane, the subendothelial connective tissue, and the internal elastic lamina, uh, these are all grouped together into one, um, one name, basically. This entire portion from the endothelial cells to draw it in, to the internal elastic lamina. All of that together is known as the tunica intima of the blood vessel. Okay, so tunica means layer, intima means close. So this is the layer which is close to the lumen of the blood vessel where the blood is actually uh, contained. Okay, so around the tunica intima then, you, the next layer is a layer of smooth muscle cells. And these smooth muscle cells are arranged in rings, basically, circular rings. So you'll have a smooth muscle cell, let's say, here. Then you'll have another smooth muscle cell, another smooth muscle cell, another smooth muscle cell, and they'll form a ring, a complete ring, round the lumen of the blood vessel. And you won't just have one of these rings, you'll have multiple of them. So you'll have many rings of smooth muscle cells in this next layer of the blood vessel. We'll take this out to where I've drawn the line. Okay, and this layer of smooth muscle cells is known as tunica media of the blood vessel. Okay, right. Then surrounding tunica media, oh, actually, maybe we should just discuss a little bit more about tunica media. If these smooth muscle cells, these vascular smooth muscle cells, as they're often denoted, so this is a vascular smooth muscle cell, and they're often abbreviated as VSMCs. Uh, if these vascular smooth muscle cells contract, what's going to happen? Well, when they contract, their length is going to decrease. And when the length of all of the vascular smooth muscle cells that are in this great circle, all, if all of those vascular smooth muscle cells contract and their length goes down, then that means that the circumference of this entire ring of smooth muscle cells is going to decrease. Now, if the circumference of the ring of smooth muscle cells 
decreases. Then that means that the diameter of this ring of smooth muscle cells will also decrease. And that means that what you'll end up doing is contracting down the lumen of the blood vessel because if the smooth muscle cell rings all uh, decrease in diameter then the only thing that can happen is that uh, the diameter of the lumen of the blood vessel also decreases. So you're going to decrease the lumen of the blood vessel and that's known as vasoconstriction. Okay and we'll see the involvement of that in hemostasis later. Okay then surrounding this chinica media you then have another layer of elastin, okay, so another elastic layer, and this is known as the external elastic lamina. Okay, so we have the internal elastic lamina demarcating the beginning of Chinica media, and now we have the external elastic lamina demarcating the end of Chinica media. So this is the external elastic lamina, and then outside of the external elastic lamina, you then have a um, layer of connective tissue which again is mainly collagen and the role of this connective tissue on the right outside the blood vessel is to connect the blood vessel to other tissue that surrounds it. Okay so you'll then have a layer of collagen again on the outside which I will just colour in yellow and this layer of collagen along with the uh, oops, along with the external elastic lamina together they are known as tunica adventitia, or also uh, a more modern name for this final layer of the blood vessel is to call it tunica externa. So these two layers together, they are now tunica adventitia, okay, or also called tunica externa, tunica adventitia, which is equal to tunica externa. Okay, right, so those are the layers of the blood vessel then. So now what we want to understand is how the hemostatic response occurs. How do you initiate hemostasis in response to a cut through the wall of the blood vessel? Okay, so let's look at our blood vessel now from the side, okay? So we're going back to looking at it in this sort of a view here. So basically, let's say here is our basement membrane, okay, and here are the endothelial cells sitting on our basement membrane here. Now there is something very important about vascular endothelial cells, which is that they have tight junctions between them, okay, so let's draw some of these tight junctions between the endothelial cells. Okay, so let me highlight things in. Oh, whoops, now I'll bring this up more into view of the camera. Okay, so we've got the basement membrane underneath, which is highlighted in turquoise here. Then we've got the vascular endothelial cells in here. And now in blue, what I've highlighted in blue here is the tight junctions between the endothelial cells. So these are tight junctions. Okay, now what is the function of these tight junctions? What is their significance? Well, basically, these tight junctions separate the endothelial cell membranes into two parts. Okay, it separates it into an apical portion here, which is the portion that the um, blood constituents can actually see. And it separates it into a basolateral portion that's underneath the tight junction basically. And I think to get this across better, I need to show a picture where we are looking from this aspect rather than from the aspect that we're seeing now. So if we were looking down at the endothelial cells, okay, what we'd see is these sort of fried egg cells. So endothelial cells are often compared to a fried egg because they have the nucleus at the centre here, okay, and then they have like the white of the egg spanning around and this is the rest of the cytoplasm of the cell. Okay, now let's have another endothelial cell sitting here, okay, and let's put another one in just for completion, so let's put another one in here, okay. Now, basically, in this, uh, when we were looking at this aspect, the tight junctions were just these little bits here, but now, when we're looking at this aspect, what we'll see is that the tight junctions are basically 
intertwining in this space between neighboring endothelial cells. So it's basically like a um, barrier that's separating uh, one aspect of the endothelial cells from the other aspect. Okay, so if we're in the blood, we can see the apical face of the endothelial cells, but we cannot get past this layer here, this um, barrier, this tight junction here, which spans in between all the other endothelial cells. So we can't get across this tight junction, so we can't get to the other face of the endothelial cells, we can't get to the basolateral membrane of the endothelial cells. And this polarity is very, very important, because it means that you can put proteins in the apical face of the endothelial cells and ensure that they will stay there, so they can't just diffuse into the basolateral membrane because they can't get past the tight junction, i.e. they'll diffuse all the way over here and then they'll get stuck because they just cannot move past this tight junction here. Okay. Similarly, you can put membrane proteins in the basolateral uh, membrane, which can't end up in the apical membrane, and this is what we do. Basically, the endothelial cells have a protein in their basolateral membrane, okay? So let me draw an endothelial cell larger. Okay, so we're going to have an endothelial cell here. And let's say the tight junctions are here, so these are the tight junctions. And then in the basolateral membrane here, we have a protein, okay? And this protein is really important in the hem in trigger in part of the beginning of the, um, the um, hemostasis pathway. So this is known as von Willebrand factor, okay? And it's often abbreviated to VWF, okay? So von Willebrand factor, often abbreviated to VWF for short. So this is in the basolateral membrane of these endothelial cells that line the blood vessel, but it is not in the apical membrane, and that means that the constituents of the blood cannot see von Willebrand factor normally. Okay, we'll continue this discussion in the next video, where we'll see that uh, when you induce this cut, this damage to the wall of the uh, blood vessel, what it's going to do is it's going to expose the von Willebrand factor to the components of the blood.